Hi, Jody here from Healing Journey. Uh, so I wanted to do a broadcast specifically to the Healing Journey community because I know that uh, some of you have asked some questions about estrogen, estrogen dominance. And today I wanted to talk a little bit more about estrogen dominance and um, copper. So I've talked about copper toxicity before in the past, but just to go over it in case um, you were not there for that. Um, so copper toxicity is basically when um, copper becomes too high in the body um, and usually then the copper zinc balance is off. And so what happens when there's copper toxicity is the copper actually becomes biounavailable and so you have a lot of the signs and symptoms of um, low copper because you have all this copper in your body but you can't use it. And that's pretty much like if you imagine if you're in an ocean of salt water and you're thirsty, um, you have all this water around you but you can't drink it. That's essentially what's happening when you're copper toxic. Um, so just to go over the symptoms of, of copper toxicity, so there are a lot. Um, you can scroll down and find a past video where I actually share my screen or you can check out um, coppertoxic.com. Um, and so coppertoxic.com lists a ton of symptoms. So a lot of them are, are interesting from a female perspective because they're related to like the mood strength, swings, increased PMS, um, insomnia, loss of sex drive, chocolate cravings, um, irritability, high anxiety, brain fog, panic attacks, depression, um, racing mind. Um, so these are a lot of things that we um, tend to see, you know, around the PMS. PMS time. Um, a lot of women experience anxiety. Headaches are another one. Hypoglycemia. Um, and then, of course, other mental health issues. Infertility is another huge one. Um, so there's, I mean, go on coppertoxic.com and check it out. There's tons of symptoms. So when hair and mineral analysis were done about, oh, 19... 60s, I would say, um, probably around like 40 to 50 percent of results came back as copper toxic. Today, we're seeing between 70 and 80 percent as copper toxic. So huge, huge numbers. And um, one of the reasons, so there's a couple of reasons for this. So one is because um, we're seeing copper piping used in water, so definitely get yourself a water filter. But the second has to do, and this is why we're seeing it primarily in women but it has to do with um, the use of the pill and also copper IUDs. So obviously copper IUDs is gonna drive up your copper because it is copper that you're putting in your body. So that is going to increase the amount of copper that you have in your body and it's going to affect your copper zinc balance and going to cause copper toxicity. But the other one is the pill. Um, and so this, I mean, it was very interesting for me. I was like, the pill, really? How does that work? So what often happens is the pill contains um, estrogens in it, and it also contains a progesterone-like uh, hormone called uh, progestin. And so I believe it's called progestin. But basically the progestin or the progesterone-like hormone is not as... Um, strong as the estrogen hormone and so it's not going to be able to balance out the estrogen in the same way that um, your body naturally does with progesterone. And so this is going to create an estrogen dominance kind of effect on the body. When there is a lot of estrogen on the body, then what you see is you see estrogen promotes um, copper retention. And so you're starting to see the cells holding on to the copper. And the reverse also happens where um, copper enhances estrogen production. Um, and so you're going to see more estrogen. So you can start to see here that this is going to be a vicious cycle. You're going to see more estrogen. The estrogen is going to cause more copper to be deposited in the tissues. That copper in the tissues is going to cause an increase in estrogen and it's going to continue to cycle. Um, so that is how you have the relationship between estrogen and copper. So initially when you start the pill, you may feel fine. Um, and that's because if your adrenals are working great, um, it's still able to produce a protein called ceruloplasm. I can never say that word. Um, and this is able to help to um, convert 
it, the copper into bioavailable copper so your body can still use it. But what happens as the adrenal becomes more fatigued and it's going to become more fatigued when you get more copper because the copper is going to excite the adrenals and eventually you excite the adrenals and then it bottoms itself out. So as you've excited it and then fatigued it, um, it's not going to be able to produce that ceruloplasm that you need to break down the copper and so you're going to start to see um, like huge issues. So this is where we get um, some of the reasons behind the tired but wired feeling, the racing thoughts. A lot of that has to do with copper itself um, because it's driving the adrenals and then that's creating all these other issues, releasing stress hormones and basically sending your body into constant fight or flight. Um, the other problem with copper is that it's deposited in your brain and it's deposited in your liver. So uh, my story is uh, I actually just recently discovered copper toxicity. I um, hadn't really heard of copper toxicity before I tested my hair and mineral. My hair, sorry, before I did a hair and mineral analysis, I didn't really know uh, what copper toxicity was. And when I found out about it, I was, it was a big aha moment for me. So I'd been working on my gut um, through functional medicine protocols. Um, you know, I'd done a whole bunch of other things, um, but I really hadn't looked at my mineral imbalance and I really hadn't considered copper toxicity at all. For me, um, it's possible that I had um, copper toxicity from a child, but what really drove it is pyrrole disorder related to my tick-borne illness. Um, so that would dump out the zinc from my body, which was then causing huge, crazy levels of copper toxicity. Um, and that was driving a lot of um, issues for me, a lot of anxiety, a lot of racing thoughts. I would be anxious about ridiculous things like writing a blog post when <laughs> I had no deadline for writing a blog post. Um, and I knew that these anxieties were irrational. Um, and from a therapist standpoint, knew that CBT wasn't really the solution and had a, a feeling that it was physiological, um, but didn't really know why. And when I figured out that it was copper toxicity that was driving this issue, that was a huge aha moment for me. But definitely, if you have estrogen dominance, this is something that you want to look at. Or if you suspect estrogen dominance, you're going to want to address your copper. If you have anxiety and estrogen dominance, this is a huge link for you. You're going to want to look at copper. So even if your estrogen goes down, that copper is still going to stay stored in your cells, stored in your liver, stored in your brain. You're going to have to remove it. So you're going to have to A, sort out the adrenals and improve the adrenals so that you are producing ceruloplasm, which is then going to help to make bioavailable copper. So it's turning the copper that's stuck in your cells into bioavailable copper. You also want to take some binders to start pulling that copper out of the cells, out of the body, um, so that you're balancing out the copper with the zinc and then it naturally becomes more available to you. So just, um, you know... Figuring that your estrogen is typical isn't necessarily going to sort the solution for you. Happy to talk more about this. Um, it's a huge, huge thing. Uh, I do offer hair and mineral analysis. Um, this is one of the more cheaper tests you can do, and it will definitely give you an idea of whether copper toxicity is an issue, and then we can start right away from pulling some of that copper out from your body and rebalancing the copper zinc ratio. Thanks for joining me today.